Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create this dispersion effect in Photoshop. So I've seen a lot of different methods or ways of creating this effect in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you a way that after testing all of them, I think is the most efficient and is also one that gives you a lot of freedom in terms of changing the look or the feel of the effect by just changing brushes or colors. In the description of this video, you'll find all the assets that you need to follow along as we do this composite. All right, let's go to File, Open, and in our Assets folder, we're going to find a Drake JPEG. Let's open that. The first thing I want to do in here is cut him out of the background. To do that, I'm going to use the pen tool. And before I do anything, I'm actually just going to do a levels here so that I can brighten up the whole image so I can see a little bit better where my edge is. So right about there. And then I'm going to go in here and just with the pen tool, select him out of the background. So we'll fast forward through this. All right, so there you go. We have him cut out of the background. Let's do make selection. And then with our selection made, let's go to select and mask. And with our refine edge, I'm just gonna go around where his hair meets the background here. Clean that up. And Let's turn on Smart Radius, add a few pixels, hit OK. And then I'm going to make a copy of this layer, put a layer mask on there. Then the next thing I want to do is cut his shirt out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my levels again so I can see what I'm selecting. I'm going to go into my paths and just save this in case I need to use it again. And then go to my pen tool and I already have the shirt selected from the background. So for this path, I just need to separate him from the shirt. So I'm going to go in here and basically just make a path around where his skin meets the shirt. There you go. One last little thing is this piece here. Let's go ahead and add that to our selection. And what I can do now is select both of these paths, go make selection, and then add a curves layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the levels. And I want to clip this curves layer to the man layer. So I'm going to click on this little clip icon here. And then in here, I want to change the color of the shirt. So I'm going to go to red, pull that down to add cyan, go to green, bring that up and then go to blue and bring that up. And that's about the color that I want the shirt. We are getting a little bit of a discoloration in the uh, white point. So what I'm going to do is in the green, I'm just going to pull this in a little bit and do the same in the red. Just pull that there. And also finally in the blue, pull, just pull that in a little bit like that. There you go. So I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and select both of these layers and convert them to a smart object. So we have it all in one layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that, turn off my original and rasterize this layer. And then let's go ahead and make one. We'll, we'll call this unstretched. And then I'm going to make another copy and we'll call this one stretched. And before I do anything, I'm going to recrop. So let's go to our crop tool, make sure we're on five by seven and make sure we're on uh, landscape there. Let's bring this up a bit. Let 
right about there looks nice. Set the check mark. And now I'm going to add a new background. To do that, I'm going to make sure I'm on white as the foreground color and black as the background color. And go in here and go to, sorry, not gradient map, and go to gradient up here. I want to put this on radial and then select that. And then change this to 250 and then move the center point to be behind him. And then in here, I want to change my white to be a 50% gray. There you go. All right, so now in our stretched version here, we're going to go to filter liquify. What we're going to do in here is we're just going to push this up and to the right, just that edge, so that we can use this and the color it creates for the particles that are flying away from him. So we don't really care how this looks because in the end they're just going to be particles. That looks good. Let's hit OK. All right, and then we're going to hide everything on this layer by holding down Option and clicking on the mask. And in the unstretched version, before I start actually creating the particle effects, I want to just take a chunk of his face and have it starting to fly off. So let's go ahead and just with our lasso, I'm going to just start making kind of a broken shape here like this and kind of go like this something like that. And you can make your own ship if you'd like. Finally, I do want the whole lens to be in it. So I'll just go here with a pen tool and make a path right around there, like so. And then right mouse click, make selection. Make sure I go add to selection. So it's adding to my existing selection here. Then I can go on my move tool. Um, I'm gonna do Command Shift J, and what that's going to do is it's going to make a new layer that has my selection in it. I can just move this to the right a bit, transform maybe, just so that it's cracking up into the right a bit like that. Maybe not so far away. Just something like this. Just so that you can see it's starting to crack off there. Like that. And we can also do something similar, possibly just with a chunk of his shoulder. Let's go ahead and do that as well. So we'll take this chunk right here and do shift command J again, and just move that out a little bit like that. All right, now we're going to take these layers and we'll just merge those together with command E. I'm going to add a mask to him. And now we're going to go to our brush tool. So B for our brush tool. I'm going to go in here and we are going to go to file or up here. We're going to go to import brushes. And in the assets folder, you're going to see a dispersion brushes. Just double click on that. Now you'll see we have those brushes in here. So we're going to fix, uh, select the first one, 01 dispersion. And with our mask selected, and the black as our foreground color, we're going to start digging into this edge here. Just start painting away this edge. Just And how far and how much you want to do this is up to you. The main thing is you want to get part of the, you know, the part that's going to be flying away. You want dug out. Then we're going to go to this one, change our mask color to white and then do a few hits with this brush. And just want to do right around that edge. So like that. Then we're going to go and select the O2 dispersion brush. And change the angle of it so it's flying this way. And then just hit this a few more times like so. And we can't even hit this mask with white 
right around here, like so. And then I want to go underneath, and we're going to call this background chunks. And in here, I want to select kind of the darker skin tone color. Oops. And go to one of these one of these brushes that's dispersed, a scatter brush. Maybe let's select this one, the smaller particles. And that's a little too big, so we'll make this brush smaller and just start painting in a little bit there. We can make our brush maybe a little darker. A few more particles coming in like that. Maybe select this darker blue color a little bit there, just so that we have those kind of smaller particles. Then I want to go to 04 dispersion. And now what I want to do is I want to put a layer on the top here, and we'll call this colored chunks. And this is just going to help sell the illusion. And that's selecting a few of these colors and then adding some chunks that are in those colors. So I'm just holding down option to select my brush color here and then adding a few chunks that are in those other colors. And you wanna adjust this as well, just so that they're not all looking kind of the same direction. And you can also use one of these other brushes like the 06 dispersion just for some variation here. And I'm going to add a few more dark ones as well. Oops. And how far you go with this is entirely up to you. This is just how I want mine to look and you can make as many adjustments as you want, obviously, to make it your own, whatever looks good to you. Um, I did include more brushes here so you can kind of create your own look, but I'm pretty happy with that. I may want to do just one kind of big one here. Um, like that, maybe even darker. So I'm pretty happy with that in terms of the effect. The next thing we're going to do is take all these layers that make up the man and all the particles. We're going to put those into a smart object here. So that's all on one layer. And then I'm going to go file, place embedded. And you're going to see this Dan Gold file, some kind of cracked dirt. And we're going to use this to create kind of a cracking effect and help give us some texture. So let's put this on overlay and we can just adjust the position of it. Be kind of nice if some of these cracks here on his face lined up. So I'm just looking at the crack on his face here and just lining up a few cracks right around there. So right about there looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead now and go image adjustments and do a black and white on this. So we get rid of the color like that. And then I'm going to make a copy of this, turn off the original, and in this copy, what I want to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, and just get rid of the gray so it's just the white cracks. So like that, and then put this on Multiply. And then I can take down the opacity on the overlay layer so that's just adding a tiny bit of texture. All right, so let's go ahead and put these into a group. And then what I'm going to do is add a mask to the whole thing. And I want the mask to be black so I can go in here, properties, hit invert. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold down command and select this and then start painting just where I want with a soft brush. I'm just going to start painting right where with white where I want that texture to be showing up. So just where I want those cracks. 
And I do want the cracks on most of these flying off pieces just because it's going to give him a little bit of texture. Then I want some here where his arm is breaking. And maybe some coming into his shirt here. And even a tiny bit on that arm. Just like that. That looks really nice. Okay, next we're going to go and just add kind of some uh, particles on top of this to help sell the effect. So I'm going to go File, Place Embedded, and you'll see Particles 148. Let's flip that vertical, just make it a little bit bigger here. I'm going to put this on screen and then just move it so that the particles line up. Now, I think I'm actually going to put this underneath him, so right about there. And I primarily want the particles on this side, so I'm going to add a mask here and just use a gradient with black, make it a linear gradient from foreground to transparent, and just kind of get rid of the particles here and here so that it's just coming in here behind him. All right, then on top of everything, I'm going to do File, Place Embedded, and we have the 246 particles file. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger and then put this on screen as well. For this one, I want the opacity to be 65. And again, I'm going to add a mask and just kind of make it come in from either of these sides. So most of the particles are all happening here. And then also with the mask selected and a soft brush, I'm just going to paint any particles away from his face. So right about there. So I'm happy with all that. Next, we're going to go to Gradient Map, and we're going to give this a bit of a color grade. I'm going to select the purple to orange default gradient here, and then put this on Soft Light. And you can see already that's kind of color grading the image. The problem is this purple is making the darks too dark. So what I'm going to do is just make this purple a little bit lighter, right about there. And I'm happy with that. And then finally, let's just give this whole image some final touches. And we're going to do that with a camera raw filter. So we'll call this layer final touches. And I'm going to do shift option command E. That's going to merge everything into this layer. Then I'm going to go to filter, convert for smart filters. And then go filter camera raw. And in Camera Raw, I can take the temperature down just a little bit, increase the exposure just a tiny bit, increase contrast, maybe increase the whites just a little as well, add some clarity, add a tiny bit of texture. And then I'm going to go to the FX tab and add some grain, quite a bit actually. And also go into Split Toning here and just I'm holding down Option as I do this so I can see what my highlight colors are going to look like. Just add a little bit there. Again, hold down Option so I can see what that's doing to my background color. I kind of like the purpley blue there, so let's go ahead and add some there. And then finally, I want to go to my Hue tab here and just take these uh, aquas and move them a little bit more toward green. And maybe also just add a little bit of post crop vignetting like that. Let's hit OK. All right, so there you have it. That's how you create that dispersion effect in Photoshop. Now, you will notice that I used a gradient map to color grade the image. And if you want to learn more about that, check out this tutorial here on color grading with gradient maps. And if you want more professional Photoshop training, check out my courses at Nucle.com. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. I do read them all.